you is it was his idea to meet here, and Tom will tell you why. Thanks. That's exactly what I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> I, I, in part, grew up as did my father and his father um, in Poldy. That's not why, um, and it's not because of that interesting road at the south end of Joseph Wheeler's map of all these roads that goes through um, East Poldy. I don't know anything about that, but that's not the topic today, really. It's because um, I happen to be aware um, that uh, this this uh, church got to a turning point, <clears throat> this particular church. Well, the background is uh, immigrants who quarried slate in Northwest Wales had skills that were really useful. So when they came to America, they came to where they could quarry more slate, and that was around here, among other places. So a lot of Welsh, and they built chapels um, near the quarries. Everything was, you know, on foot. So there was <clears throat> there was a Welsh chapel in um, South Poultney, one in Blissville, which is northwest uh, Poultney. Um, there's one still standing, very much not used, hasn't been for a long time, in North Poultney on White Road, um, right there among the quarries. And then probably the last built was this one, 1901, right? 1898. 1898, thank you. Um, <clears throat> because by then enough of the Welsh were living in the village that this was a convenient place. So what they got, of course, was uh, Sunday worship in their choice of language and stuff. Well, <clears throat> this church used to be Pulteney's Welsh Presbyterian Church, not really officially Presbyterian now, and they're on their own as a nonprofit organization. And so for that reason, I thought, wouldn't that be nice? We, the Crown Point Road Association doesn't have a home. You know, we don't own a building or property or anything. So we, you know, write a check for about $100 every year to um, borrow a home for an afternoon and have this meeting. And so I thought, um, gee, uh, let's do it here. So um, all of that is to explain why we're here. And I want uh, to welcome uh, the pastor of this church, Frank Sears, to um, welcome us to uh, his community and his church. Thank you, Tom. And, and let there be no mistake, it's not my church. We know it's the, it's the Lord's church. But we welcome you here. And we thank you so very much for allowing... Our group, that is the Welsh Presbyterian group, to have its doors open for your gathering. Um, as Tom had mentioned, uh, the church building itself was built in 1898, and it was built by the Welsh uh, slate quarry uh, folks. Um, this was the center point for um, the uh, not only... Uh, worshiping, but for all of the community events that they held. And it was a very active building. Uh, the first uh, time the doors were open was 1900, January 1st, 1900. So anyways, long story short, I just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here today. Feel at home um, and know that you are one of many, many folks that have come through the doors to enjoy the warmth and the quietness that the building has to offer. Um, there is, uh, we have out there by the water jugs, a, um, a leaflet out there, pamphlet, that tells about the history of the church. Take time, to go ahead and take one home with you. The ladies of the church have put together uh, some book tabs that you'll find in each one. Take that with you, please. And uh, there's also direction, or I should say, consideration for you to donate to the cause if you like. We're in the process of renovating the building. The building is known as a historical piece by the U.S. federal government. And the community has come around, and together we are moving forward as the Welch Church Preservation Alliance to bring this lady back to the way she should be, uh, pristine as, as can be, at least. At any rate, again, thank you so much. This is my wife, Shelley. Uh, she's the deacon of the church, and I'm a, an elder of the church, and I lead worship here at the church on Sundays. 
So thank you very much, and please make yourself to home. And, and like Queen Elizabeth II, you may have a corgi, a Welsh corgi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 All right, so yeah, this is a this is a beautiful building, and I'm glad we're glad that we are welcome here. Um, we we usually start off the meeting with uh, with a moment of memory for some folks who belong to the Crown Point Road Association that, that have departed in the last year or so, and uh, two of those come to mind that I, I, I guess I would mention. Uh, one was Barbara Jones, Barbara Mae Jones, of, 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 who grew up in Springfield and then was worked in Charlestown, in particular with Fort at Number 4 over there. She was a trustee of that organization for many years there, historian. Uh, in the early days of the uh, Crown Point Road Association, she was very active. Uh, one of the things she worked on was a, a journal from uh, Samuel McClintock. Uh, McClintock uh, was a uh, pastor, and he yes, was on the Goths, uh, the Goths Regiment when they started yes, off down the Concord Way and marched up to uh, Crown Point in, in uh, I guess that was 1760. And uh, McClintock wrote a great deal about it. Uh, uh, we still have a few of those books left, I think, don't we, Dale? So, uh, yes, so, as many. Uh, I'm just going to pass this around later. I want to have a look at it. And, and uh, so we remember Barbara was, uh, died at the age of 86. So she lived a good, ripe life and uh, was very, very good. The other person I, I, who comes to mind is uh, Robert McClure, Bob McClure uh, of Shoreham. Um, who uh, was also a, a great historian. He, he was fought in World War II, uh, became a, a, big, a big corporate lawyer in New York City, but then in 1963, I guess, he decided to get away from the rat race, uh, and he bought a place in Shoreham, uh, in particular the place on Hans Cove, and I'm sure many of you know that Hans Cove was the, it was there that Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys left in 1775 to capture Fort Ticonderoga. And there was still a blockhouse there that we explored not long ago. And uh, so, so he was a great steward there. He was also very actively involved in the Mount Independence, so the um, historic site. And in fact, there's a lecture given there every year, uh, the, the J. Robert McGuire lecture that's given every summer, um, endowed by him. So. Uh, so we do want to acknowledge those. I don't know if anybody wanted to add a word that knew them, that, uh, but I, I think there were certainly great, great people and uh, did good work. Bob was 96 when he died, so. Uh, Huzzah. Yeah, so Huzzah is right, so, so thanks. Um, so I, what I, we usually start these meetings by going through a, what we've done over the past year and uh, um, I threw together a little PowerPoint here. This, this uh, Slide is from a few years back, but um, I thought I'd throw that up there to get us started, and let's we'll see what what's first. What's next, Dale? Dale Christie is our technician and assistant by Whitney. They're also our secretary and treasurer, respectively. So, uh, whoops. Okay. So, uh, this was an odd year for for everybody in this room, I'm sure. Uh, we have traditionally met in person during the course over the winter. Uh, this year we, we adapted like many of you have and we ended up doing this uh, virtually. So this is what we, this is what we looked like over the, uh, over the course of the winter. It was uh, um, interesting to say the least. We hope, we, I don't know, we'll have to talk about whether we're gonna continue to do that this coming year or not. But at least the advantage was you don't have to travel in the winter, but uh, we certainly missed the camaraderie of getting together in person. So. Um, we can probably move on to mail from there if you'd like. And, and this is the, uh, the schedule that we came up with. If you remember, you got one of these in the mail. The, again, Dale put that together. You know, the, this magnet was on my uh, refrigerator all year, and hopefully it was for many of you as well. Um, I might note that uh, in, in the past years, we have tried to do an outing in April, a, a bus tour. And organized some wonderful bus tours on behalf of the association in the past years. Uh, a couple of years ago, we went to uh, historic Albanese of the Dutch settlements there. We went to, up to Chambly in Quebec. We went to, uh, we've been to historic Deerfield. Uh, 
um, <coughs> Strawberry Bank, and the others that people can think of. Uh, and we'll talk about seeing whether we can do one of those again next year, because they are great fun, and again, a good chance to get together and, uh, and go from there. So we dispensed with that, and we began in, in May. And they all have you to hold the first slide, and then we'll go, we'll go through the rest of them when we're done here. May, we started off the year, whoops, no, go, no, go forward, no. thanks. But uh, um, in Pittsburgh, and uh, Jim Rowe, who's our master of car tours, uh, organized the thing, and he was ably assisted by uh, Bill Powers, who's also here today. And, uh, and as you can see, uh, we had a great turnout. People had been were chomping at the bit waiting to get out, and it was nice to be able to get out. So I think we probably had 30 or more people at that event. Uh, we, we took some tours. The, I guess we can flip through some of these now, Dale, if you want. The, the, you saw the earlier ones. We went to the Fort, Fort Vengeance. And here's a couple of pictures that Rebecca Hauger took uh, of Jim, one of our longtime members, and, and yours truly. So, so that's what we did in May. And then we moved on to June. Um, in June, we had a, an outing in West Rutland. Uh, exploring the historic home site of Solomon Purdy. Uh, and the, our leader was uh, Julia Purdy, who's a descendant. Um, and again, this was, we had a nice turnout in, in West Rutland. Um, I guess we can go to this next slide, Dale. This, this, these maps sort of set the area for, for, I'm not sure how well you can see them. This map on the left is an old lotting map. Um, uh, this is the this is Meads Falls here in, in center Rutland, and what they call Trout Brook on this is what we know as the Clarendon River. And over here, there's a, a cellar hole, which was Solomon Purdy's. Um, looking at this map, this is the, this is the old Route 4. Um, back in the 60s, a, a new road, the divided highway, was put through from West Rutland to the New York State line, and then around the 90s, I guess, uh, the road was extended, uh, it's coming out by the Diamond Run Mall, and prior to that they did a lot, a lot of excavation in this area, which indeed was where the cabin was, and there were some artifacts found, and, and Julia informed us about that, so uh, that, was our, that was our May Alley. And then, uh, what was that, June? That was June, excuse me, and then we came to July, which was where we got off the beaten track a little bit. Um, we. Uh, we love history, we love Vermont history. And one of the things we learned about this winter that, uh, was that there was going to be a celebration. This is uh, it was an event that occurred 250 years ago, which some would call the birthplace of Vermont, uh, which is where I grew up. So I was automatically interested, and because many of us love history, we were involved. Uh, Bob Bohr, who's going to be our speaker later, uh, has been leading tours there uh, for, for a number of years and, and did so on this event. And, and uh, Jonah Spivak, who's also here from Bennington, and got together with others and did a great job of organizing this. And uh, we, uh, as members of the Crown Point Road Association, actively uh, were involved with the planning and also getting the word out about it. And, uh, uh, and, and it was a great event. Maybe you can go, go through it slowly the next couple of pictures here. This, this was the, the event itself. Uh, we had a tent, hopefully the, the rain held off. Uh, we had some dignitaries uh, um, and, and, and speakers to mark the occasion. It was a very well-organized event. Uh, next photo, I guess, Dale. Uh, um, the, there were a number of living historians uh, who, who came and, and, and joined us. Um, and here you can see a number of them as well. Mike Barbieri's here. and. Uh, uh, number of other people, so that, so that was of great interest to a number of people that attended, and I guess we can move to the next slide. Uh, in addition to the main tent I showed you earlier, there were a number of organizations that set up pop-up tents, and as you can see, the Crown Point Road Association was front and center, and we met a lot of new people and, uh, um, and, and spread, up, spread the word about our, our organization and the Crown Point Road. And I guess there may be a last slide here. Nope, oh, is that the last one? What? I guess I guess it is. Okay, so um, that that moves us into August when we were in Clarendon. Uh, uh, again, Jim Rowe is our master of car tours, and several years ago we started a car tour of the Crown Point Road that started in Springfield and has worked its way is working its way slowly toward Lake Champlain. 
Last year we got as far as uh, Shrewsbury, and so this year we picked it up in Clarendon, uh, and we were ably assisted by members of the Clarendon Histor Historical Society of Clarendon, Vermont, uh, in particular Bob Underhill, who's present here today, uh, organized it for that, uh, that event, and uh, we've got a few pictures of that. Um, you should understand, though, that these tavern tours are strictly bring your own flaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And unfortunately, in, in, in Clarendon, you had to bring your own tavern because most of the ones that we, <laughs> we visited, most of the sites we visited there had, had burned out over the years. We started at the old, uh, old schoolhouse down the town clerk's office in the Clarendon Flats area and proceeded from there. Um, this map sort of shows the route and this shows some of the people that were there participating. Um, uh, here's a a couple of people, it was uh, George and Nancy Smith, long-time members are on the left, and it was well, as a car tour, but uh, at least, I don't know, who's the, either of you folks from Clarendon know who that was from Clarendon who showed up on her bike, and she, she probably got some of these places faster than we did, because of all the time it takes to you know, get in your car and get out of your car, she followed right along. So, uh, um, I guess we can go to the next slide, and here's a few more pictures we took down by one of the churches, down by uh, the Clarendon Gorge, and um, there's one more picture at the site of the old Bowman Tavern. Uh, um, and those green shirts are, uh, we have those green shirts for sale somewhere downstairs, don't we, Dale? If people want to get a book or a shirt, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, and that moved us into August, and in August we, we also arranged, we've been we're very interested in the military road that goes through Hubbardton, uh, which was the road, the route in use during the American Revolution when the primary defense was at uh, Fort Ty and Mount Independence. Uh, that was again organized by Jim Rowe and Tom Hughes uh, also spoke and uh, we stopped at, this is stopping at the marker along the road out to uh, Mount Independence. Um, and I guess we can go to the next slide. There's, um, there's another marker that marks actually the, the Hubbard Military Road, one of the old markers that still exists on, in between there. And then, then the, at the end, uh, Ron Tefani, who was, uh, came down from the Montpelier area, said, well, let's get a group picture of everybody who's showed up on this car tour. So, uh, so as you can see, we had a nice turnout for that tour as well. And that got us to last month, September, um, when we uh, visited what's known as the Stone Piles Campsite. This is a outing I led. Um, I visited there 20 years, I think it was the year 2000 when I first went there and I was really intrigued by the place. I said, we gotta get back there and it took a decade or two, but we finally made it back. Uh, um, Tom Ellis of Fultley owns the property and he was very gracious about it. A couple of things here, we do have an old map that was built was prepared of Plymouth in 1859, um, and it, it's a great detailed map, and it does show the route of the Crown Point Road on it. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Um, and that, of course, was the route that was used in the American Revolution. Uh, this is of interest for several reasons. One of our old time members, Carmine Gucci, uh, found a bullet mold at the site. So that sort of makes it pretty intriguing, and, and Phil Mandelier is here. I think we can trace that back to probably Revolutionary War vintage. Yeah. Um, um, so, uh, so we we went in. This was a hike. Uh, we did a lot of car tours this year, but this was a true hike. So I guess we can move to the next slide, Dale. Uh, we had a little map study, and again, I think most of you can see that the old the original route, 1759, they basically made a straight shot. By 1776, they did a route further up and crossed further up on the Black River to, uh, for various reasons. Uh, so, so we were heading here. There's Jim Rowe, I think, trying to climb up through the, the pucker brush. Uh, and we got up there, and I guess the next slide, Dale. Uh, um, th these photos really don't do it justice, but there are a number of uh, fireplaces, I guess, for want of a better word, that are there. <coughs> Just very fascinating. They're set out. They seem to be geometrically set out. We need to go back there and do a lot of 
more work in investigation, but at least it's got this got the back on everybody's radar screen. So, uh, so, so that's that. So that's that's the outing. Does anybody want to comment on any of those outings before we move on? I was just going to mention in, uh, in that at that stone pile. It yeah. was also in the 1800s, the soapstone. Oh, yes, yeah, and the, the soapstone there, Quarry showed on that map, which you probably can't read from where you are. And we did we did go by that soapstone quarry. And also very interesting. Yeah. Well. So, uh, so that covers the outings that we did. Uh, we, we also worked on some other projects. So I, I threw a few slides up here about some of them, so Maybe we can talk about those. Uh, one of the th we, we talked about that the stone piles outing, uh, uh, another place where they we have been looking for artifacts, and as you can see, we have been finding some. Um, thanks, thanks to, to Phil Mandelier who is here. This is on the uh, the Maris property, which is the former Dean Farm in Brandon. I don't know how well you can see the, the map here, but this uh, Brandon village is up here. Um, and uh, the, the uh, Crown Point Road passed basically to the south and west of that. Uh, the Damaris place, the Dean Farm, is here, and, and they gave Phil permission to uh, check that territory with his, with his metal detector, which he did quite competently. And you can see a number of the artifacts that he found. This is just one of many slides, but uh, we'll. we'll Hoping maybe next year we can get there. This year, because of COVID, the uh, the Maris really didn't want people going in and, and hosting a large group. But I'm hoping we can get in there and and, and maybe get Phil to bring some of his show and tell things for us as well in the coming years. There's more there to be found. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so so that that's 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 always that's of interest, and um, that's one of the other things we we worked on, and, and Phil mainly, but. Uh, We've been following closely, and Dale, I guess the next slide. Uh, um, there was also some work done. Many of you uh, um, know the uh, 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 property out on the uh, uh, in, this is, I guess still Oral, right? The Audette's property, which is on the Hubbardton Military Road. Again, that was when when the uh, during the American Revolution, since the area was being fortified and defended was here, and Crown Point was up here, the, a new road was cut and it goes through the Audette property. Uh, uh, there have also been some artifacts found there. There's one. Jim, you've been involved with that more than I have. Anything you want to add about that particular situation? Uh, just that it's kind of been an ongoing um, project for a number of weeks now, and I'm not sure if they've been back there lately or not, but they found numerous musket balls. They found this ball here, which you see it's about one inch diameter. And, um, you say today, or they talk about the Audettes, or um, the other Well, there's a fellow from Castleton and his son that are doing this metal detecting here. And hopefully we can stretch it out to adjoining property owners and you know, pick up a pretty good line on the roof of the road is, is, what, is what's, what's happening. And it's getting down where the road went. So it's amazing. I mean, like I know what Phil's been finding a number of musket balls in, in, a, in a given area. They're doing almost the same thing. Just amazing that so many can be dropped. But I, I've often been told that wherever men went or women, Things got dropped. This is just unbelievable. Yeah. So, and again, Phil, Phil's uh, slide, real previous slide, Phil shows what you can find, and yeah, I don't I have all the slides here. I might want to share just one funny story. Is right. when I was working on the Crown Point Road, I was right in the middle of the road, and I heard something, and I dug it up, and it was a dog tag, and the dog tag was one of the people that had gone on a tour. That I just happened to know personally, <laughs> and, 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 I, and, and he was about eleven miles away as crow flies. So I thought that was funny because you find all kinds of things uh, to find a dog tag on the front of my 
wrote and know the person who lost it. Right, so, so before you leave today, check your belongings, make sure you're here. <laughs> Otherwise, 50 years from now. So that's another ongoing project we're keeping our eyes on. I guess the next slide. Uh, another uh, interesting thing that happened is, is, uh, the, is the work with the Harper 45A, which was placed by the DAR in Pittsford in 1911. Um, it, says it, it's, it says it marks the Crown Point Road built by General Amherst in 1759. Now, I don't know how well you can see these maps. Here's the Pittsford Village here. The, the uh, Otter Creek is here. And we know from our research that the Amherst Road, 1759, wasn't east of the creek. It was west of the creek along the red line that you probably can't see along the, uh, I guess that's the uh, Crick Road in, in Pittsford. So, um, and the marker was located, let me get my bearings here. Is this it? was located about here, is that right? And there was a crossing, but we looked earlier down here. So there was a road that crossed there, but we don't think that was the 1759 road. So presently, the marker is behind the Pittsburgh Historical Society. And the president of the Pittsburgh Historical Society is here, Bill Powers. And you have some, you've been working on this, and what can you tell us about it? <clears throat> you know, uh, as uh, Barry said, we know that the Crown Point Road was uh, once it crossed Otter Creek and Clarendon, it went up the west side of Otter Creek. And this monument was on Devil Hill Road, which was on the east side of Otter Creek. Uh, and in the last couple of years, the town of Pittsburgh has been doing some uh, electrical work and had an electrical substation right next to the monument, and the monument was pretty low on the ground despite the uh, concrete you see around it. So, after discussion with uh, folks in the Crown Point Road Association, we decided to remove that. And the Jimbrough came down and released the, uh, the monument <clears throat> from that concrete. It only took a day, <laughs> quite a job. So that rests there in uh, the same spot now behind the Pittsburgh Historical Society. Uh, the future plan for that is, is, is based on the following. That monument was erected in 1911 by the DAR. There's no documentation saying why it was placed on Depot Hill Road. I don't believe Duffel Hill Road was even invented until the railroad came through in the 1850s. If there was a later version or spur of the Crown Point Road that went up the east side of Otter Creek it, and crossed, it might have gone down what is now Hendy Lane. And uh, so we have two other markers. If, can I go touch your shirt? Sure. Uh, I finger. I've got a shaky hand. I won't do it. <laughs> but here you've got this red line <clears throat> Hollister Quarry Road and Gorham Bridge down here, where there are uh, Crown Point Road markers. And in the past, we've uh, gone on hikes on Crown Point Road north and south of these points. It appears from the path of least resistance, at least in 1759, that the Crown Point Road would have come up here and gone through. There's a bunch of hills. Of course, there's all kinds of quarries here now. But uh, the Crown Point Road went up right about here and crossed. Uh, this is Fire Hill Road. This is the Whipple Hollow Road. And right about here, <clears throat> there is the, there's, uh, those of you who attended this meeting in last October, I talked about the Waters Tavern that existed there in 1774. The, uh, it appears that the, uh, the Crown Point Road was fairly close to, uh, to the Waters Tavern. 
So the monument will probably be re replaced over here. We have permission from the right in a close proximity of where the road probably was in a more authentic location. It helps to have the vice president of the uh, Pittsburgh Historical be the mother of the gal who owns the farm there. Too. <laughs> So we've had good support from the town. Uh, you'll continue to get good support from the Pittsburgh Historical Society. So uh, that's, uh, anybody got any questions? Good, then we gotta leave because you got another meeting. I got the Pittsburgh Historical Society's <laughs> annual meeting in a few hours. So <laughs> well, Thanks for all your work. So I can add that Evidently, that there was another road or branch road that was certainly in place there, 1780, 1781. Uh, we know there was Fort Rutland uh, right at the intersection of West Street and North and South Main Street, I guess. And hopefully a little ongoing work might bring about some more evidence of that road. Um, but I know we've got a couple things to look at in Pittsburgh as far as brook crossings and whatnot. But... You know, possibly in the future we can place another marker there in Pittsburgh, just acknowledging that road coming up and perhaps crossing at Pitts Ford, um, you know, just for future. But this marker, it definitely was placed wrong when it's Crown Point Road, 1759, built by General Amherst. That was clearly on the west side of Otter Creek, so the reasons why it was placed there, like Bill said, we, we just don't know. I've been there 100 years. Yeah, 100 yeah, years. Yeah. And of course, Pitts Ford has been there for a lot longer than that, and I'm sure people were crossing even before. <coughs> so, Bill, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And maybe the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And maybe the next slide, and the last one up. The, uh, it's another old marker by the Dollars of the American Revolution. This is one of the oldest, 1903, in, in center Rutland. Uh, Picture on the left uh, shows the old Route 4, Route 4A now, um, and the railroad track was there in the, <coughs> back then. Uh, and this is the East Pittsford Road, and, the, and there is the watering trough, uh, where it, its location, where it, when it was originally set 100 years ago, you can see the trolley that ran from Rutland out to Castleton and Bombazine. Uh, you can also see a, a horse and buggy. The horses were the watering trough. Um, it, when improvements were made, it was relocated. I think it's been relocated three or four times now. It presently, is under these railroad tracks, uh, uh, not very well seen. And uh, one of the things we've talked about as members of the uh, Crown Point Road Association, well, wouldn't it be nice if that could be moved? So, um, next slide, I guess. Um, as, as luck would have it, we've been in touch with the town of Rutland, where it is. Um, and uh, they're on board with this. Uh, um, they, I think most of you know, uh, are familiar with the center of Rutland, that this is the map of Route 4A, uh, Meads Falls. The center of Rutland is, is here, uh, and, and, the, and the original road, the Crown Point Road, went this way, and then in, in, the, in the American Revolution, they, they crossed here. Um, so, um, so the town of Rutland, and with other partners, is talking about making a pocket park, which is going to be along this side of uh, Otter Creek, which is the west side. Um, here's another slide that uh, comes up. And, and the notion is, I guess, there is already a, a historic marker in this area marking the Meads Falls as a and the, and the region. And the notion is to move the, that watering trough over here so It'll be part of this pocket park. So that's very exciting news, and it's going to be a few years in the making, but it will be that, that's such a historic area. It'll be nice to have a pocket park there celebrating that, and it'll be nice to have that uh, water trough in a place where you can see it without taking your life in your hands as the traffic's flying by. Barry, <laughs> Barry, if we're going to move it, and this will be the fourth or fifth move, let's this time just go ahead and put casters under it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I think that was, those are the, the slides I had for you. Any, any questions about any of those projects before I move on to the next phase? You know, I, I think 
and my understanding that the Prize of America has only been moved once from the original place. And that road construction on Business Route 4, 4A, was in 1959. So it's been 62 years that it's been sitting where it is now. Which I ask a lot of people if they've ever noticed the old watering trough. And no, nobody oh, yeah. does. Yeah. You, you're driving through the traffic's moving along pretty good. You've got the railroad overpass, and it's right there on the east end of it to the right. You just drive by it, you never see it. But yeah. this is a sidewalk there you go down. So originally it was in the center of the intersection, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, where East Proctor Road What is does anybody it? know how it was? Bed, so well, there was a spring there with a pipe. Okay. And Jim Moore has always said that if you go there in the springtime, especially, you'll see water coming up to okay. the pavement someplace. So that's <laughs> probably still a pipe feeding it there someplace. Mm -hmm. And again, Phil, this this is uh, well, the old roof floor yeah. right now. This is that East Proctor Road. There. I think I've seen a picture of it where it's right, in, you know, the roads are all around it. Yeah. I was wondering how the water got to it. Yeah. So apparently I think there was actually an overflow port on the top of that fill, so it kind of, you know, spring water flowed in from the bottom and then it overflowed into a, you know, back into the ground there somehow. Yeah. So, yeah, the DIR did some, yeah, was marking this road long before our association was around and, uh, and the markers are still there. So, so good. So, any other thoughts about that? And how I can move on. I guess I'm pretty much done with the PowerPoint at this point, so we can... Uh, um, um, so we have a couple of matters. So we have a secretary's report and a treasurer's report. I think, Dale, you passed out this secretary's report and, Dave, and Whitney's treasurer's report as well. Um, I don't know if we want to read that or if people have looked at it and uh, have any questions about it. How do you want to proceed, Dale? Uh, I prepared the one with the pie chart. It's just um, giving you a, an overview of where we stand with some numbers. You're welcome to look at them later. But all the metrics basically show that we're doing pretty well with membership and, and social media. And all our numbers seem to be going up pretty well. Um, the bottom half kind of shows you the memberships. Uh, the members continue to give us very um, generous additional funds and the numbers are doing pretty well. Uh, at the bottom it says uh, the average membership contribution was about 13, almost $14 and at least the expensive option is $5 for a single membership so certainly people are, are um, helping our cause but yes the number of posts on, on uh, Facebook have been doing quite well. Tom Hughes uh, deserves a lot of the credit on that. Uh, I have been sending out a newsletter to a lot of members and non-members uh, on average about once a month and we're up to 215 recipients for that. So we're um, definitely hitting a lot of people's inboxes of some sort. Um, that is my report. Um, if, if there's any questions, go ahead. Uh, Thank you for making it sustainable. I see on, on the back that it's reusable. <laughs> it's, um, the back is, if you look even closer, it's actually a number of folded lines because I thought I would use the back of the page as a template to make it into a paper airplane. <laughs> so on the back there is instructions in the number of, in the order in which you would fold it. And so feel free to make future use of this piece of paper. Um, because no one collects these. But just to make sure that everybody understands what physically fiscal responsible, um, I use very little toner on the back. I made it as light as possible, so the treasurer will be happy that I didn't spend a lot of extra money on the back of the form. Uh, any other questions? I suppose we should have a motion if there are no other questions and to accept the... Uh... Secretary's report. I'll entertain that if somebody wants to make it. So motion. All right. Whitney is seconded by. I'll second. All right. All right. Uh, any other comment? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank you. So Whitney, Treasurer's report. There's no horses here. That's good. <laughs> um, 
I think the numbers kind of speak for themselves, but um, basically we're a little bit more on the hold than we are most years. Um, still generally going up. I don't do really cool um, paper airplanes on the back of mine. I make tapeworms. So that's the back of mine is with a tapeworm thing. <laughs> So, generally we're doing pretty well. As uh, Dale alluded to, we, the majority of our income does appear to be mostly from dues, so thank you everybody who's a member. Do you have any questions? I don't know. If there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Move. All right. Seconded. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank you, and thank you to both of you for your uh, work over the year and for your reports. And I guess I'm going to try to just sort of go through a couple of other things. Um, we, we talked a year ago about doing an interpretive sign, and I know we've had some discussions about doing that at Fort Number 4. It kind of got stalled. I don't know if they we're working on that. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything. Otherwise, I'll just move. Well, I don't really know where we're at. Yeah, at this yeah. point with it. Um, yeah. we, we talked about it and, it, and we got involved with other things. So we'll, we'll work on that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're working on marker books revisions. Dale, is that something you can speak to? Sure. Um, it's one of those efforts that starts and stops often and stops for a long time. Um, it's... It's going to be a process. We've um, established a few things. Um, we kind of agreed upon the size of the book. Um, it'll be likely larger. It'll still be spiral bound. Um, and we have a pretty good idea of what sections we want to add and some sections we want to remove. Uh, we have a template for the markers. We'd like to have each marker prominently um, with its own page. Um, so the book may even get a little bigger, but we're hoping to add more content. You know, a lot of the stuff the um, outing leaders know about doesn't always end up anywhere, and we don't want to lose that, hif that history. So some of the other uh, knowledge we'd like to include in the book. Uh, it may not be citable, uh, but at least we preserve that word of mouth story. Um, so we, we're definitely working on a book. We have no target in mind as far as when it may be completed. If the winter goes well, it could be next spring, but most likely it won't be. Um, the, there's some good volunteers that are working on that, and we'll see how far it goes. Um, we have a, a decent supply of books right now with the current edition. We've been trying to sell them. Uh, they're on sale right now for $10 each. Just try to use up some of the the inventory we have, and we'll see. Hopefully, we'll have a new edition at some point for everybody with uh, newer maps and color pictures, and it'll be a much more of a modern book that everybody will want to have, hopefully. Well, thank you for the report and for your work. Um, I don't know whether there are other... Uh, if there's other committee reports for old business, this would be the time to put those out. If they're not, I'm going to keep moving along. Um, not hearing any other old business. How about new business? Does anybody have any new business they want to bring up? Moving right along. Um, I guess the other thing we need to do today is, to, is, is for an election of officers. Um, we had election. Well, there are there are seven members of our of the Crown Point Road Association board. There are four: the president, I am president, the vice president, the secretary, and the treasurer. We had a vote last, and we know there are two-year terms. We had a vote at last year's meeting. Uh, I, I was installed as president. Uh, Dennis Devereaux was vice president. Uh, Dale was secretary and Whitney was treasurer. Uh, after I took over as president, I decided to look at the bylaws, and they said the elections are for two years, but they're supposed to be held in odd years. So this last year was an even year. This is an odd year. <laughs> so, well, COVID last year was coming yeah. odd. <laughs> so, so I guess to get us back on the odd track, um, my suggestion is that we 
um, hold those officer elections now for a term of two years. Um, I've spoken to myself and, and also to uh, Dennis and, and Dale and Whitney, and each of us are uh, willing to stand for another year, but we certainly are willing to entertain nominations from the floor if you want to serve or if you want to pick on somebody else to serve, that's fine. So uh, moving through that, I guess we can why don't we start by opening the nominations for president. I, I nominate Mary Griffith. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sure. Any other nominations? In the interest of moving this along, I'll uh, call the vote and say all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Move us to uh, vice president. Vice president's position. Dennis Devereaux couldn't make it today, but he said he would be willing to serve another term. Dennis. Okay. Second. Okay. Any other nominations for vice president of this August organization? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of Dennis for uh, vice president say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Dennis has been reelected. Um, Secretary Dale Christie is willing to run again. I'll open nominations for that position. I move we nominate Dale Christie. Okay. Second. Second. <laughs> Can I do that? Any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of Dale for another term as our secretary? Aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And then lastly, our, for the position of treasurer, uh, Whitney has indicated she would serve again if we elected, but we'll open nominations for treasurer. I'll make Whitney. All right, second. Any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of Whitney Christie as our treasurer, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Congratulations, Whitney. And, and thanks to you both, because you two have really done yeoman work for this organization for many years. Um, that um, brings us, the, well, so those are four officers, and we have three other trustees, and the bylaws say um, they are elected one a year for, for to serve a three-year term. So we elect a new a trustee every year. Um, Two, two years ago, we elected Tom Hughes, so he's for one year. Yeah, one year ago, we elected Tom, so he's got two years on his term. Um, two years ago, we elected Larry Clark as the other trustee. So, Larry, you've got one more year, and you've got many years of service, and we thank you for that. Uh, the third trustee uh, whose um, nomination or whose term expired today was Joe Pascarella. Um, Joe lives in Connecticut. He was, I guess, on his way up here and has had car problems, so he is not present, but uh, he indicated he would be willing, this is happy not to serve, but we did um, um, talk about some, some people that might do that. I think, I guess maybe what I'll do is open the floor for nominations to trustee. Or maybe, or maybe I will tell you that um, one of the folks we did talk about was, uh, was Barb DeBacca. Thank you. I want to make sure I pronounced that correctly. Barb has been become very active at this past year, and I know we are supposed to have a nominating committee to have to see if people are willing to serve, and Barb, and we approached Barb, and she said she would be willing to do that, so um, I'd be happy to receive a nomination for her or someone else. We'll hold on the fire. Okay. One second. All right. Any other nominations for our three-year term as trustee? Hearing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor of Barb? Frosca as our new treasurer, or excuse me, tr trustee for three years. Say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Barb, thank you for uh, stepping up and we look forward to working with you. Um, so, um, it's 2.26. Um, if there's no other, if there's there's no other business. I'm going to propose that we uh, um, adjourn. I'm going to, I'll, I'll, what I'll do when we come, I'm going to suggest we all adjourn at the end of the meeting. We'll take about 10 minutes. Everybody can stretch their legs. Uh, our speaker can get set up, and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes, and, 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 look, and I'll introduce him and, and the presentation. So if
Is there any other business to come before this uh, association's annual meeting? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second to that. I'll second. Any discussions? All, right. All in favor of adjourning the annual meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, this meeting is adjourned. We'll take a 10-minute break and see you for round two.